we as individuals, we as communities, we as a population are impacted both directly and indirectly from motorised uh, road tra travel and transport. And actually, we can sometimes see the personal impact to ourselves if we've got underlying conditions such as uh, asthma. Uh, we can sometimes taste the air pollution. Um, but we don't always get to see some of the cancers that are caused by the particulates, the, the heart disease, the heart problems, the strokes, uh, the early onset dementia uh, and depression, the worse exam grades in, uh, in school children. Um, and, but we do sometimes see the indirect impacts from, from road accidents. But we don't always see the lack of physical activity that results from us sitting in our cars. And actually, it's also the, uh, the poor accessibility of services. So, for example, a third of people who are in the lowest quintile of the population by income don't have access to a car. And these are the ones who most often need health care, for example. So how are we going to sort of square some of these circles? How are we going to be able to provide high quality health care, but without some of the harms that we can see that motorised transport has? Um, there are a lot of health professionals who are very concerned about the, uh, the health impacts from uh, road transport. And I'll talk about those uh, uh, in a little bit. Uh, next slide, please. But actually, I want to be positive. And I want to talk to you about a drug that I have invented that will reduce heart disease and strokes by a third and diabetes by a half, some cancers by a half, Alzheimer's by 45%. It also reduces anxiety and depression, and it doesn't create air pollution or greenhouse gases, and it strengthens neighbourhoods and communities. If I had a drug that did all of that, I think I'd be an overnight billionaire. But of course, it isn't a drug that does this. It's walking. So the question is, how can we benefit the health of the people across the countries and the communities that we live in and the whole population by getting them to do more of things like this, more active commuting and less... Uh, uh, travel and transport and commutes by fossilised fuels. Next slide, please. Um, lift sharing is actually something which uh, is increasingly important. So this was a, a practice I was doing some work with. They had a concern about their car park space, um, which is really where, where this came from. Um, and actually, we did a, a staff survey and effectively plotted where everybody lived on Google Maps. And the practice manager said, oh, there's four staff that live all the way over there, so about three miles away from the surgery, but I know that they all travel in separately. I know what cars they come in. Um, and this was really got the mind thinking. And the question was really posed to the staff, would you like to travel together? And they actually leapt at the opportunity and they said, it would give us such joy. It would give us a joyful commute if we could share. So the outcomes was really that there was more happiness. There was more chat and gossip. There was more camaraderie. There was a, a rise in morale. They had an enjoyable commute. They had more money in their pocket because they were spending less. And the practice was happy because it freed up uh, um, space in the car park for the patients to park. So there were less complaints. For me personally, I was delighted because there was better air quality because of the cars off the road and fewer greenhouse gas emissions. And that gave me joy.